So am I. <laughs> so, just so. Senti, un paese si chiama. Uh, oh, ma just scusate, ma non è vero. Un paese dove? Un paese, un coppo bombero. Un coppo bombero. Un coppo bombero. Il padre era nato in coppo bombero. Il padre was born on the top of the hill in Bombero. Un bombero. Kind of similar to what the Upper East Side when at the elite. That's funny because my mom is from Calabria, my father's from Naples, right. and my mother's town is called Alto Mondo. Alto Mondo. Yeah, so we're up there too. Right. <laughs> Listen, I have to tell you something. I um, I'm a, I'm Facebook friends with you. Okay, and I know that. I read your poems, mm -hmm. and I love them. Thank you. I'm so impressed, sincerely. Uh, is that something new that you started? No, I've been writing poetry since I was a young man. Really? Yeah. It's a pretty deep, big heart. Thank you. Very romantic, too. I would say that's true. Yes. <laughs> and also, being that uh, we travel to PA, me and Eddie always go to Pennsylvania. His parents live in Pennsylvania. Do you know Paul is a sculptor? Sculptor? Yeah. He has a bronze sculpt sculpture of a playwright of um, Jason Miller, who... Um, I think you were very fond of, right? In one order... of my dear, dear friends, yes. Right. So I did his sculpture. It's in the uh, in the courthouse square of West Grand, Pennsylvania. That's uh, that, you're really, an, I mean, a true artist in a sense that. Well, that's a profession. It's not a hobby. I, <laughs> I do ah. it. I do shows. I do commissions. That's a, that's a profession. Yeah, and also um, he can pull you over if he wants to, right? I can indeed. I'm a deputy sheriff. And, I, and as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to get the camera. I think it's time he spent some time in jail. Hey, you. <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town. Yes, new there is. Yeah. A new hey. sheriff in town. I am. So I'm like pretty impressed with, this is my favorite thing, because I'm a big, I love um, opera, I love music in general, and being raised a full-blooded Italian. You're Italian? Yeah, I'm Italian. He's Irish, forgive me. But, uh, Stand a little further away. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good because, uh, you know. I am the only Italian tenor who sings Irish songs. See? Really? I knew there were some Irish there. Come on, Paul. <laughs> the pale moon was rising above the sweet mountain. The sun was declining beneath the blue sea. When I strayed with my love to the pure crystal fountain that lies in the beautiful vale of Trani. She was lovely and fair like the rose of the summer, but who was not her beauty alone that won me? Oh no, it was the truth in her eyes ever dawning that made me love me. The rose 
I was, I, was, I was on the show with Rose and Ed, <laughs> yes. and it's a wonderful show, and now I, I put I put them onto my uncle. No, uh, we are, are so crazy. Privileged. My uncle's crazy. Zany. <laughs> you say zany. We want to be zany now. Zany, zany. I'm zany. Show business is zany. zany. Love you it. This thing is beautiful yeah. Irish song. You know that may be. Oh, I want to hear an Italian song, though. What an opposition. Babu Jacques is from Kistanga. Quando i belli ad un manca, senza smani da basa. Et chiamme scarai urne, va per la destra carora. Venga rotta rindo cora, e non posso rapusa. A Roma fa morì, o che ne vuora me. Mamma mia che bella diva che che sta smare non mi vola so oh non mi fa morì tu che ne vuole a me mamma mia che da pura come rancio le punta mamma mia che da pura oh mamma mia che da pura oh Mamma mia, che da pura! Bravo! Grazie. Sono a chiangere. Sì. Mi piacere, Maron. I was going to ask him what he's sharing in current events. Sai, mio papà, ti voglio vuole bene a te assai. He loves you in everything that you do, my dad. He's 75 and... What are you? Are you really? God bless you. You're fantastic. Thank you. Very nice. Look at that. See that? You single? <laughs> <laughs> but I have a girlfriend. He has a girlfriend. Yeah. And I gotta ask. You may be something. getting an Emmy right now in Philadelphia. Really? Really. Wow. Who is she? Dee Dee's name is Dee Dee Benke. Dee Dee She's a columnist on Fox News and Fox. Uh, She's going to be on Fox Business tomorrow night. It's actually Monday night at 6 p.m. She's a commentator. She's a, a, a Republican strategist, worked at the White House. She's and he has some person. interesting conversations, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you guys actually debate it? I don't get into it. I okay. say, listen. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to talk about yeah. that. If you would share with our audience, ABTV audience, what is Wall Street now doing now? Current events. I just finished a movie. Beautiful. I just finished a movie uh, called uh, uh, "Lily of the Feast," directed by um, Federico Castellucci, the great artist actor, um, one of my dearest friends. I am going to do a movie in Toronto. Uh, this week, doing a cameo there. I'm going to do an episode of the Goldbergs in the beginning of October, right, October 6th. I don't know when I'm going to put it on. Busy, busy. And then I've got uh, another movie to do in Toronto after that. I have several movies coming out. One of them is called uh, Once Upon a Time in Queens. Another one is called Careful What You Wish For. How many ones can we talk about? I've got wow. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. That's a, a huge lineup for this year, right? Is that just in the next couple of months? Basically. I've got three movies to do, and I've done 10 or 12 in the last year. God bless. I have to say this in English, and then I'll say it in Italian. Do you have time to make tomato sauce? Because you know it's the season now. Do you make, do you make homemade tomato sauce? Of course. Of course. And wine. And wine. I don't make my own wine, but oh. I'm cooking since I'm 12. All right, so listen, I'm a firm believer. I, my, I grew up on homemade sauce. My mom grew her own tomatoes, organic, never used any pesticides, nothing in the garden, whatever. Made our own sauce. I don't believe in putting sugar oh, and butter in my sauce. Please. Okay? So, what's your opinion? <laughs> You can't make an ugly donut sauce and put sugar in it. That's, Thank you. That's, that's right. not sauce. Sunday, you, you don't call that sauce. It doesn't belong in a, in tomatoes. How do you make your sauce? 
it's a long story. That what sauce are you talking about? Marinara sauce, the filete right. di pomodoro, ragù. 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 No sugar. Do you put butter in your sauce? No. No way. No sugar, no butter in your sauce. Basil, fresh olive, well, olive oil, extra virgin. And not extra virgin. Not extra virgin? No, because it gets better as you cook it. See? Okay. Not extra virgin. It's regular imported olive oil. There you go. So that's how you make your sauce. <laughs> Well, Paul, Tomato, if you're talking about a, a marinara sauce. A marinara. A marinara, which means sailor. Marinara is a, the Neapolitan word for sailor. Yeah. It's sailor sauce, marinara sauce. So marinara is tomatoes, olive oil, garlic, basilico, solid paper, salt and pepper, and pasta. And pasta. You know what pasta means? What That's pasta? enough. That's, That's enough. enough. Okay. Cue them all. Cue them all. Send it. Allure. See. I don't want to take up all your time because I can be here all night with you. Shows how to lose asthma. It's on Amazon right now. Really? How to become a former asthmatic. And you can, if you have asthma, or you know someone who does, go to my website, which is paulsorvino.com, and you will see the link to the Sorvino Asthma Foundation, in which you will see a video talk about and you can download it for nothing. There is no charge. Wow. If you want to make a donation, God bless you. If you don't, that's fine. You get the video that's anyway. That's incredible because asthma is very, it's deadly to They're young kids. They're thinking 20% now. Wow. Yeah, and they just had a virus around that if you had asthma and you caught this virus, these yeah, children and teenagers uh, die from the virus. And it's it's no joke, my nephew has asthma and um tell him to go to the site. I'm gonna. Look at this. And and he cures things. Unbelievable. You are amazing. Thank you, Signorina. Okay. Not what else is there that I don't know about? Well, what are the other things I do, I suppose. Uh, I'm a director. I'm also, uh, as you know, I'm a poet. Uh, I'm also a painter. Not, I'm an amateur painter. I'm not a great painter. I'm a good painter. I'm a, um, I'm a better sculptor because that's my profession as, a, as an artist. I'm a decent painter. Um, a writer. I always write. I really so can I just ask you a deep yeah. question? What inspired you to do all this? I mean, you're Italian. You were born in Italy. No, I was born no, here. You were born here. Okay, and your parents were from Naples. My father was born in Naples, my mother was born here. Okay. My parents who were Casa de Molise. Okay. Not far from Naples. Not far from Naples. Well, my father's from Benevento. Mm-hmm. Ma che stai di Gian? Ah, I'm a Barladija. We already talked about it. Are you talking about Yeah, we talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> Gop. 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 Well, I will say also to you that what you may or may not know about me is my family is noble. Oh, and, uh, our family code uh, stemma, the coat of arms goes back to the uh, 12th century. Uh, I have been knighted by the Order of the Carincia, which is started by St. George uh, for the protection of the Pope. So I am Cavaliere di Gran Croce, also Reno, and I'm also a knight of the Italian Republic, so I'm a knight two different ways. God, I want to kiss him. Give us a kiss. He's a knight. Give us a kiss. Go ahead and kiss him. Go ahead and kiss him. What are you waiting for? I want to get Didi. It's okay. Didi won't. Didi won't get mad. I won't show it to her. Oh. She's a little jealous. I will say. So, because you have like. A little jealous of her too. A little jealousy is good for everybody. You gotta have a little. Just a little. not human. That's right. And then it shows. It shows you care. Want to see her? Yeah, yes. I want to see her. I think you can probably get a look uh, because she just uh, texted me. She's at in Philadelphia at the Emmy Awards. That is so and cool. And she's up for one, and we're hoping she's going to win. Can Codini, you get this? We're, we're really rooting for you. Can you get this? Come on. Can you do a close-up, Can you see that? Mauricio. Beautiful. I, I want to see it. You'll give her a bella ragazza. Maron. This is veramente bella. One more time. Didi Benki. Didi Benki. Benki. She's up for the 
And she's up for an Emmy. As, she's a host of a show on Hebrew TV. She's a co-host of a show. She's a, a commentator. She's a public commentator. You know, all the, um, uh, Republican strategist. Uh, she's many, many things. Madonna Bella. Uh, Bella. Bad, bad, as the Sicilians say, bad, bedissima. Mitzga. Mitzga. Okay. She won her first beauty contest when she was 18. She's the real deal. But she's, she's so smart. smart. Sounds smart. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. Keep Great you on fun toes, together. Huh? <laughs> well, I don't want to take up all your time. I'm sure there's other people where you. I have them right now. Well, thank you, my dear. <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking to you. Yes. Thank you. Tanto piacere. Grazie. Troppo contento. Yeah, no, right there. And uh, yeah. you really um, you bring a lot to the table, a lot to talk about. You inspire me tremendously, and I'm sure everybody out there. So that, you were asking me why I did all these things. Yes, we that's didn't get I didn't get to finish. Like that's AD. That. That's why it's called TV. AD TV because I have AD. I, I, I would like. To, I'd like to answer that. Yes, take. I, okay, I knew here. at a young age. I knew at a young age uh, that everything interested me, and I knew. I could draw, because as soon as I did it, I could do it. So I've been drawing since I was very small. And I could hear things, and imitating things. I was on the stage at five, I was so, and so, not professionally, but at school, I was so comfortable. I knew what I was gonna do. And it just, as a result of my being interested in so many things and having the knack to do a number of different things, it came to me that I deserved to do it for myself to develop all of these things, which have interested in me greatly. So that was music, and I'm a pianist as well. You're a uh, pianist? Yes. And uh, art, and piano, and writing, and, uh, and singing, and all these things, they're all, all one thing to me. I mean, I do them at different times in the day, but they're all, they all have the universal laws of art. They're all the same. Once you understand the technique, the difference in technique of approach, I mean, a ballet dancer is not an actor, but they are similar artistic relation, artistic rules that govern both. And there's like a discipline. Oh yes, and that discipline, once you understand the rules of one, it's easier to shift over to another because you just need to acquire the technique and the style, and that gives you, but you still go there with a, with a head start because if you are an artist and you go to another world, if you go from writing to painting or sculpting, you go there with the expertise that you had before, and so once you learn the technique, you apply the same expertise, the same soul. You learn how to give your soul, not just how to do things technically, but you learn how to impart your soul completely in your work, in like your a, heart. Like a, a deep, true passion. Oh, yeah, big time. Very very my good. life, yeah. Let me ask you this. Uh, this might be a hard question to answer. What's your favorite out of all? Uh, I think sculpting. Really? Yeah, I think so. That's your number one? Wow! I think if you had to put me in a room and say you can't, you're not allowed to do anything else. I Where, think you have music? to, you'd have to just put me in that room, give me sculpting materials and leave me alone. Wow. And I'll be okay. Oh, you're really going to lock me in here and I can't do anything else? <laughs> <laughs> so oh, please don't throw me in the briar patch, says Bear Rabbit. <laughs> that's so, so that's an outlet and escape for you? No, it's not an or escape, it's an art. It's a, see, most people who do these things as hobbies, you know, people make ships and put them in bottles, right? They make ships in bottles. Right. I, I have no hobbies. I have no time for I have a couple of pastimes. I play pool and I play tennis. Those are pastimes and sports. Okay. But everything else I do is a, is a profession. I do everything I do as a profession. But I don't bother doing it. I'm not interested in doing things in a half-assed way. I'm just not. If I don't master what it is I'm doing, I'd rather not do it. It doesn't feed back to me. So this is not an escape. I have many escapes. I have many ways to vent my artistic sensibilities and to put out what's in my heart. I have all kinds of channels, but they all appeal to me, and they all, and the differences between them fascinate me. So one day it's acting, one day I just did a musical movie called uh, Devil's Carnival 2. They wrote three songs for me. Oh, what beautiful songs. So I, I'm lucky I get to do things other people don't get to do because of, of all the different things I've developed in my life and the different the, the skills that I've acquired. You're not born with skill. You may be born with a knack. You're born with talent. I, I believe that. Oh, it's true. I mean, that's why people of talent who don't study have miserable lives. George C. Scott, people like that. He never knew what the hell he was doing. He never knew if it was going to come, so he was always... He was drank a bottle of scotch a day to try to drown the fears. That's so true. It's like, um, instead of, that's what a, I think being a great artist is, is uh, 
actually confronting your fear, well, well, that's when something comes out. I'm afraid of nothing out. because yeah. I know how to do it. I go there with my homework under my arm. I don't approach a test as, oh my goodness, I, I can't wait. Because I've studied, I know what I'm doing. And he me, said he mastered it. That I master it or don't, or I don't do it. Is, and if it's not I'm something sorry. for me, if I feel that it's not something for me, like golf, my brother's a great golfer. He just recently shot his age. He's, he just he's, shot his age. Yeah, well, that's he, he's 78, to, he just turned 79, but he's, he shot his age. At that age, it's incredible. This guy could have been a world famous, incredible golfer, but he did other things. But he could play golf. I tried it once. Uh, I said, this is not for me. I play tennis. I got very good at tennis. Um, I do what I'd like to do. It either, I, if I don't have a knack for it, if, it, I'm not, if it's not natural for me. For instance, my brother is a better athlete than that. My brother is a great athlete. Phil. He's a great born technique. He doesn't need anything. He walks on, well, just does it. Now, if he were to be a professional golfer, he, and he knows this, he would have to play every single day. Well, he's a poor businessman, he can't do that. But if he did, he would, because he's already acquired so much skill and so he has so much talent that all he has to do is, is just do the, the labor necessary to be a professional. And he would have done it. He would have been one of the best, if not the best. It's just a great talent. Music. I'm a good athlete. So I work at playing tennis to be really good, and I got tennis to Tennis is hard. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, I play golf. I play golf, all right? And, I, yes, I did get a hole in one. I did. Mm. So did I did the same thing. thing. You did the same thing. I grabbed the ball from somebody and walked and put it right in. <laughs> it was great. Is music number two? Because you have a beautiful voice. That music is wonderful. never number two to never, anything. Yeah. And music is, is my life. I mean, it's just... I mean, you say, what would I like to do the most? I mean, music as a as a as a category, uh, you have to say that's number one in everything to everyone because music is the reflection of our soul. So true. It's a whole without music, this world is. The, I mean, I mean real music. I don't mean right. talking in rhythm. Who's your favorite? Of like what? musician. All right, like uh, Beethoven. Beethoven. Yes. You know, I have this Verdi, question. Puccini. The greatest center in the history of the world is Enrico Caruso. Caruso, right. Yeah, this was oh. the greatest. I have this question. When you were um, like 18, what did you think you wanted? I thought I was going to be a singer only, and um, I knew I was going to be an actor. I already was an actor. And I always knew I had to, to bend for writing, and I became a famous ad man for a time. I was a very prominent ad man, writer, creative director of an agency. And they wanted me to stay in that, and I could have done very well with it. I just wasn't enough art. It was artistic, but not enough art. It wasn't art for art's sake, it was art for commercial sake, and I couldn't do that. That's amazing. And when did you start acting? Professionally? Um, I started singing professionally when I was 16. I started acting when I was in summer stock when I was 19. And they gave me a few lines, and I did them well, so I knew I was an actor, and they knew it. And that's what put it on. And then I had scholarships to everybody, voice teachers, active teachers, everything. I had scholarships, I had scholarships. That's amazing. Uh, like, there's like no excuse. Everybody, it, there's no excuse to just be stuck in one thing or say, I don't know what I want to do. Because there's so much out there. And you're just a great example of mastering so many things. And like, some people just get stuck in that rut. Do you have any advice for any of these people? Yes, keep your mind open. First of all, it's very good to do one thing very well. I agree with that. I mean, there's no reason that everyone has to be uh, polysyllabic about, the, about their art and their work. It is, I would say this, you have to perform in a profession. You have to do something to put food on the table. Everybody knows that. And you may not be lucky enough, as I have been, to put food on the table doing art, doing movies, doing plays, doing music, doing... Uh, with all the things I do, I was able to make a living at it, and I'm able to make a living at it. However, if your profession is not an artistic one, you lose out a great deal if you don't make art a big part of your life. You lose an enormous amount. A well-rounded person needs music, poetry, that other dimension. A well-rounded person needs literature, needs other worlds. We just can't have a Mercedes and call ourselves accomplished. Uh, the, the, the real way to be accomplished is to be well-rounded. Culture. Uh, and culture is not just 
going to Lincoln Center, but it's becoming involved on almost a spiritual level with music and literature and art. Go to museums, find out what's out there, what great minds and great talents are there to show you. You know, you go to, I go to the same, to the Metropolitan Museum of Art whenever I'm in New York, and I usually try to go every few weeks. And I go there with my daughter Mira, and we love to go. And, and uh, I, I will go, I will go and to the old masters every single time because I'm interested in, in looking at uh, Rembrandt and I'm interested in Halls and I'm, the great painters speak to me directly. They don't speak to me offhandedly. I feel they are absolutely speaking to me personally, one to one. Now that's a marvelous way to go through life because if you can go there and get filled up with that, if you are only one dimension, two dimensional, three, there is another dimension. Out there. We don't have. We don't have poetry in our lives anymore. That's a dead thing. I know. It, no one wants it. So, we don't um, have beautiful music in our lives it's in, so in, in true. today's culture. Right. We don't have lyrics it's true. to songs. Right. We don't have religion. It's so, so true. We, we don't have that extra dimension. Because that, that really affects me because, you know what, I, I have a really deep side and sometimes it's, you know, people get turned off because they don't have time to think about these things. These things are what makes life Work. That's why we have a lot of problems in this world. We can't exactly just live what you said. on what we can touch. Exactly. Cannot. It's like nobody reads books as I much I read 50 anymore. books a year. Wow. <laughs> what made me do that better is I got a nice stand, because I, I read myself to sleep every night. got a nice stand that does one of these things that sits on the floor, and has a big arm like this, and, and it holds my iPad. And so you, I keep buying books, you know, and I just read them. Old things, new things. Cowboy Books by Louis L'Amour. Um, Hemingway, I've been rereading Hemingway. Um, just things that interest me. Well, that makes you a richer person. You're better for others. And deep. You're better and for yourself. It's true. You're like more grounded with, literally, with the with the universe because these are all. You're always learning. Yeah, these are all uh, If you are ignorant, that ignorance hurts you, whether you know it or not. You may be ignorant of the damage it's doing to you. But a truly educated person, I don't necessarily mean going to college, I couldn't do it, there's no opportunity. My daughter is Harvard educated with Michael Cloudy, but uh, and my son is educated. My, my I can get education and I've got it. I have three, uh, three honorary degrees and I have I have enough to best on golf, but there's many things I can do. The education is there, it's in the it's in it's on the internet, it's in what you do is read. It will open it all up to you. And without doing that, you clog your way through life. You don't ever understand what's out there, what could fit your heart or reveal yourself to you. Thank you. That is so I love that. Everything you're saying is just like resonating. Art reveals us to ourselves. When I went to see at the Louvre Michelangelo's Dying Slave and Rebel Slave, I didn't just admire it, I wept and had to leave the building. Now why is that? Because that man was speaking such a part in me. Now if I hadn't had that experience, I'm kind of poor for it. The fact that I've had it, it informs all of them the rest of my days. Uh, I'm speechless <laughs> for the first time, right? I've never speechless until I met two people. When I met Sophia Lauren, I couldn't speak for about 30 seconds. I love her. And then when I met uh, um, Bishop Tutu, I could not speak. This little man, this little giant of a man, and I'm doing one of my great heroes, and I'm, I couldn't speak, and he knew it. And he just looked at me, and he put his hands like this and watched me with that beatific smile on his and I couldn't talk, and I'm rather valuable, you may have noticed, and I couldn't talk. And I, and he waited, and I said, and then he was reverend, I said, Reverend Tutu, you're the bravest man in the world. He said, oh no, not me, it's all the others, not me. Wow. Yeah, thank you very yes. much. Well, we're going to wrap this up here with Paul Servino. We're here at the Golden Door International Film Festival with Paul Sorino. We have this moment, of, I mean, I feel totally blessed right now. You guys have no idea, and I'm glad you guys were here to actually see how deep this man is and how talented he is. Multi-talented. Multi -talented. A master at all. Yes, a master at all. It's also a great example of we really need to open up our, our minds and just let, let
let the art in. So we're going to close this off at the Golden Doors International Film Festival. And, you and you're watching ADTV. Good night, everybody. Well, this is an honor for us to present. You know, this is named after John Barrymore, so we really wanted to present it in the bar, but uh, we we'll have to go over that one. So. Let's take a look. Take a look. Nelson, if you want to do the honors. It is my pleasure. The Fort Lee Film Commission presents the 2014 Barrymore Award to Paul Sorvino for his lifetime achievement in the American film industry. And of course, it's presented on September 21st here at the Golden Door International Film Festival. Congratulations and thank you for a lifetime event.
legacy that he's, he's giving to, 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 to our family, Nira, myself, Michael. And uh, I tell him all the time, all the time, I say, oh, well, why did you have to set the bar so fucking high? <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to do this? But I will never stop at like somewhere get re remotely close to that bar that you set so impossibly high. And I've told you, I've told you this many times. The, 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 this is this is to me the god of acting. Forget Marlon Brando. Forget <laughs> whatever you want to talk about. This guy right here has taken on some roles that no one, no one, no one in history of acting could have done. As well, sir. And that is a valuable award because I will do my best to hold the torch for this man. You keep working on it, you'll get there. Thank you. That's it. And everyone, please, we are all invited to the Grove Bistro, uh, which is on Grove and North Avenue for the after party. Please, everyone here, try to make it over there. It's a 16 York Ave. 16 York Ave. Please, please come to the after party. Thank you, Todd, again. Nice. Wonderful. Congratulations. Room. It's lovely. It's lovely. It's really wonderful. Beautiful. Wonderful. Oh. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Went to a good man. We got Gina, we got... So, we're going to say good night. Good night, good night. Michael, Bonnie, Eric. Good night, good night, everyone. Eric. Bring Eric to everybody. Say good night. Good night, good night. So, thank you for joining us this evening. Project. Golden Door At the Golden Project. Door. Project. Speak louder, for God's sakes. Thank you for joining us. At the Golden Door Film International Film Festival, here we're so glad you came with us. So we'll see you again next time on ADTV. Good night, everybody. Can you thank the freaking director at oh, least. Oh my God! Don't forget about it. Yeah, I have to thank my director, or my cameraman, my bro, yes, definitely. Mauricio Wally. Thank you for filming tonight.